you guys will hear the sirens in the background. But every time I leave the apartment to go pick up my daughter during the week uh, from school, they will engage in a noise campaign. Okay, every, this is every day on a weekday when I go pick up my daughter. As I'm leaving to go pick up my daughter from school, they will always use the noise campaign, usually ambulances. Um, you know, and again, it's a pattern, right? It's a pattern. Um, you know, things don't happen at the exact same time every single day uh, during the week when I go pick up my daughter. Um, you know, she gets out of school at 2.10. I usually leave around and it's 2 or even 2 o'clock and they will engage in a noise campaign every single time. All right? Uh oh, look. <laughs> the purple across the street. Uh, the purple one was calling the fecal department during the summer. They engage in targeting. It's hilarious. Anyway, as I was saying about the uh, Flint, Michigan. So when you really listen to what happened at Flint, Michigan, it's like the government of Michigan basically poisoned the entire town of Flint, Michigan for money. Okay, for money. All right, and this, this new book reveals exactly why they did it, how they did it, right? The steps they went through to hide what they did, right? The reason why they did it, okay? How the government of Flint, um, any, everybody who was involved in poisoning uh, Flint, Michigan, within the US, within their government, uh, the state government, uh, basically had their phones, uh, the text messages deleted, even in the cloud, right? Even the cloud storage uh, that had uh, the text messages in there, they deleted all that, all of it, all of it, okay? All of it, you know? Where was the, uh, where was the FBI, right? Where is the Department of Justice, okay? And then they sued, all right? <laughs> they, they, they got some lawyer who was working with the government, right? So they hired this lawyer, again, this is what they'll do. And sued and got something like, I think, $500 million, which is nothing compared to how much the lawyer is going to get. It's probably going to get almost half of that. And then the victims only gets a payout of something like, I think it was like 20, you know, some ranging from like uh, 15000 to 30000 each for each victim. These people are going to need care for the rest of their lives, okay? And that's all they get. We're talking about the, the, the poisoning of over 20,000 people, right? And a lot of those people have died because of that. They've had organ failures because of that, okay? No one in, that, in the government administration at that time, right, got charged for murder, okay? Not one of them. Right? And in the book, you know, the author says, you know, if you are a black person, if you're predominantly black, and you live in towns in which are poor, or even in cities which are poor, that you're at the mercy of these white supremacists, of the government. And they have shown how they've treated people of color, particularly black people. And he said that they will poison you. Right? They will do all sorts of things to you with no accountability. No accountability at all. And he's right. He's right. Okay? If you look what happened uh, with um, TD Bank. TD Bank have been caught laundering drugs money. Right? You had drug, drug cartels who were giving uh, gift cards worth some upwards of 50 uh, Fifty thousand dollars, okay, to bank employees, right? Over a number of years, and what happened, right? Remember, corporations are now a person. Corporations have been reclassified as a person since they can give uh, money to political candidates any amount. Where is the? Why the, <laughs> How come they haven't arrested anybody that worked at TD Bank? 
the CEOs, the employees. But what the government will do is said, okay, you know, we're going to fine you three billion dollars. Three billion dollars. Different rules for different folks. All right? If you're wealthy, if you're a wealthy corporation, you can do whatever the hell you want. If you work in certain states in the US government, you can poison black people, you can kill them and get away with it. Right? And Negro Peans, again, engage in this sort of tactics and behavior towards me. Right? Working together with the white racists, white supremacists, the Sambos and Sambinas to try to silence those of us who speak the truth. Right? So whether you're white, Asian, Hispanic, you're a TI, you know, their job is to silence you. Their job is to silence you and they will use their very own people to do it. And particularly if you're a black person, we know the history of how black people have been treated in America. But you also got to understand the psychological manipulation being done, particularly to black people. The self-hatred, the self-centered, particularly if they're religious, they become very self-centered, very tunnel vision, uh, thinking that, you know, that they're highly favored. Each one of them thinking that they're highly favored by God because they might be doing well, you know. It's all nonsense. Meanwhile, they ignore the fact that you have billions of people on this planet who don't believe in your God, right? You have tens of thousands of wealthy people that don't believe in your God. And I say wealthy people. I don't say rich people, right? I say wealthy people that don't believe in your God, okay? They never seem to think about that. But again, you know, we kind of have a one-track mind and we only see what's in front of us. And our bubble is either religious or, I should say, religious and ignorance. Or our anecdotal experience that we think is the norm. Right? And again, it is not. So, again, you know, I, like I said, man, but they will ignore the truth, though. They will ignore the truth. They will ignore the fact that their children are being suspended more than any other group of children. All right? Their children are being more, mostly punished in school compared to other groups of children who exhibit the same behavior. All right? And uh, he was watching a video of, uh, I forgot the guy's name, but he's talking about, uh, you know, these, these conservative Republicans talking point about uh, black people committing the most crime. And the whole thing is that black people don't commit the most crime. But they have the most incarceration rate per capita, right, per the population. Why is that? Because black people will be arrested and convicted for nonviolent crime, whereas white people will get some sort of treatment, some sort of help, some sort of probation, right? And that's the fact. And this is a, a white dude I say that, all right? Talk to you guys in this video.